Hi, citizens of YouTube, friends. Uh, what I want to do is one of these lovely little um, fun challenges, a uh, little comparison video. I love these ones, you know, can you hear the difference between these guitars? You know, can you tell when the new pickups are in this guitar as opposed to the stock version, you know, doing them uh, effectively blindfold? Always entertain me. So this one is a simple uh, theme of can you tell the sound of the guitars in order of price? Didn't work that well. Can you hear the price difference in the, the acoustic guitars? I have three acoustic guitars. Um, they're, they're actually all my acoustic guitars and they all come into the category of decent to very, very high quality. Um, and I, I take that category to really start with solid top guitars. And I know these days you can get solid top guitars with very, very low price, but you, by which we mean a solid piece of wood. It's not laminated, it's not stuck together. It's, it's, a, lamin it, it's, it's a pure, narrow, um, flat cut piece of wood. So uh, all three of these have got solid tops. In the case of one of them, um, it's got solid uh, rosewood back and sides as well. Uh, in the case of a second, um, it's got solid, um, I think it's mahogany back and sides. And one of them, um, a tailor, has got a solid spruce top, but it has some kind of laminated um, uh, rosewood back and uh, sides. But I don't know what that means. I don't know what the process is. It maybe is just a posh way of saying it's quite high quality plywood on the back and sides. Oddly, that's not the cheapest of the three guitars. It's um, it's actually the, the intermediate one. But I'll just show you the guitars quickly and tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to record a short section of playing finger pick with just a brief bit of strumming. I'm going to put an apology in up front. I don't tend to use a plectrum. For me, a plectrum is only if I've broken a nail. So my strumming may have a different tone, but it'll still let you compare the three guitars. Um, and I'm recording them all on a Rode NT1. I've got it here in the stand, which I'm touching, but uh, you'll all be familiar with the type. Very much an internet standard, the Rode NT1. Uh, large diaphragm condenser, very, very good value. Um, and very reliable and, and repeatable results from it. Very low noise as well. A lot uh, less noise generated internally in that mic uh, than my room deserves because there's a storm blowing outside and this is just a bedroom. Uh, so there's plenty of uh, you know heating noise or whatever in the house in here. So what I'm going to do is record the three sections. I'm just simply going to play them and they're going to be titled on screen purely guitar one, guitar two and guitar three. And you know how the drill goes at the end. I'll, I'll put a wee 10 second um, uh, wait time up, just a wee warning, so that you can hit stop if you if you like playing these these little challenges and you can um, you know, have a wee think about it and decide which of the three guitars uh, number one, two and three actually are and then I'll reveal so the 10 second um, uh, warning will give you a wee pause uh, if, if, you want to, if you want to act in that to think. So the three guitars are hanging here. Uh, I'll just take them in order on the wall and I promise you the order on the wall bears no relation to any choices I made about the order in which I played them. Uh, this one is a Tanglewood um, TW15NS. I've always loved these. I helped arrange my, my, my very uh, dear friend um, uh, who, who was getting a birthday gift from his uh, wonderful wife, my other friend, some years ago, probably 25 years ago off the top of my head. And at the time uh, it was 250 of your UK earth pounds. And um, every time I pick it up now I think it sounds like a like a Martin or something, it's the most incredible sounding instrument. So when I saw one uh, used, probably about four or five years ago, probably three or four years ago, I picked it up and uh, and I just love it. This is the mah spruce top, I think. Yes, it is spruce top. Mahogany back and sides, mahogany neck. It's such a Martin copy. If you look at the neck there, uh, sorry, the back of the headstock, and that's me clunking it. Don't know if the camera is able to pick that up, but just right there, there's a little diamond shape cut out in the wood, which is exactly what Martin do on their guitars. So I think um, that 
that this is very much a Martin Dreadnought shape copy, like a D18, a D28, but obviously a, a cheaper version. This retails now, if you can get them. I, they say discontinued in some sites, although you can still find lots of shops that are selling them new. They're about six to seven hundred pounds, between six and seven hundred pounds. Used, you can get them down as low as about two, two hundred to two hundred and fifty. So my friend's done well hanging on to his, and uh, he'll never part with it. He loves it, um, and, and it's a it's seen as a really good value guitar because it's all solid timber. It's, you know, a single sheet of timber. So that's the Tanglewood. That's six to seven hundred pounds. The second of my Steel Strong guitars is uh, a little bit more boutique and actually I'm a bit embarrassed to say that this was actually uh, uh, made at my request, um, one of my, my, my crazy indulgences. I really like Mike Ritchie who is noted now as a classical guitar maker, I, I believe he's a very a very um, um, a coveted, you know, uh, a highly reputable classical guitar maker. But Mike himself plays a Telecaster from time to time. Um, I believe he, for a long time he was the guitar tech when, when they were touring for Bell and Sebastian as well. Mike's a lovely, lovely guy who has a passion for guitar making. So he made this um, for me uh, after discussing what I liked in a previous guitar of his, uh, which was not made for me, that I happened to have bought. And uh, he, he, he let me photograph this while it was being made, so I actually have online, if anyone's ever interested, just a few pictures of the process of Mike making this. Mike went to Spain at one point to study the classical guitar maker's techniques, and he uses all natural glues and, and uh, you know, traditional natural techniques. So you'll just as often see him screwing up, you know, um, twine tightly to, to clamp wood as he, as he uh, will be seen using modern clamps. So it's, it's fascinating, a real passion-filled purist of a, of a maker. So this is a Mike Ritchie. No name on the headstock. You have to look inside the sound hole to see that it's a Mike Ritchie. There's no way that the camera will pick that up, but you can see that that's where the evidence is. And Mike told me that he, he simply has never found anything more beautiful than the wood in the headstock. He's got that kind of passion for wood. You'll notice I'm not playing any of these because I don't want any giveaways, right? So you, you know, you're seeing them. This is, a, this is a very expensive guitar. I can't honestly give you a price for it now because I've had this for some, probably between 10 and 15 years, I'm not sure. It cost £2,500 and I know at that time he was doing me a special deal because I had already previously bought um, another one of his guitars um, uh, from his early guitar making days uh, which I'd fallen in love with when I had my guitar into his workshop for a repair. So this is very expensive, very boutique. This is a, a better guitar frankly than I deserve. But hey, we've all got one life and I love this guitar. And finally, we have probably the oddest one. Now I'm going to point out that this one has a cutaway. This is Taylor. Taylor's um, uh, not a guitar I particularly have ever coveted or craved. But when I, I was looking after I sold my other Mike Ritchie, which didn't sound wise, it didn't suit my needs for what I do, but I wanted a second guitar. Uh, this one is the one I like best in the kind of price range I was willing to pay for a second guitar. And uh, it, it's a solid spruce front top. But as I said, this is some kind of laminated rosewood back and sides. It's a um, mahogany neck. Um, I think it's a, it's also a great sounding guitar. This one retails round about £1,200 to £1,300. So it's a 1000 let's say 1250 average, roughly there for this particular guitar. So this is the one that's in the middle expense-wise. My handmade is way up there as a super high end. And my office guitar, the Tanglewood, it's a ridiculous thing to say, but my barely played Tanglewood. Um, six to seven hundred pounds. So I'm going to, to be quiet now. I'm going to hang these away and I'm going to just let you uh, watch the screen go dark and you can uh, you can decide for yourself which is which. I would love to hear in your comments whether you can tell. So you have to rank or you have to choose which one is guitar one, two and three 
and uh, obviously which one is the, 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 the most expensive, which one is the cheapest and which one's the intermediate one on the basis of sound because we should be able to hear the difference, shouldn't we, in the, um, uh, in, in the sound. Uh, the same microphone, the same room, all done within a uh, half an hour to an hour of each other. I should also say they've all, I missed this important point, they've all just been restrung in the last week with the uh, identical Daddario Phosphor Bronze Light acoustic strings. So it's as, as fair a test and a comparison as I can possibly make. Um, I would wish you luck, but I know that if you're listening to this uh, to, to this uh, podcast, podcast, this vodcast on my channel, you have golden ears and you're going to get this right. See you on the other side, folks.